On May 11, the headquarters of the Shanghai Pudon Development Bank, SPDB, a banking giant ranked ninth nationwide, turned into an epitheater of dissent, teeming with striking staff. Images from the scene, shared far and wide on social media, depict a compelling picture. Nearly a hundred employees stationed on the entrance steps of the bank's Pudong Lu Jiazui branch, their work IDs serving as silent protest banners. Some even took the rebellion into the heart of the institution, adorning their office interiors with strike notices printed on A4 paper. Recent annual reports and industry data released by listed security firms in China reflect a sombering reality of substantial dwindling in average employee remuneration. This starkly contradicts the narrative spun by the China's Bureau of Statistics, which claimed the financial industry boasted the highest wage growth in 2022. Admits this tumult, Billionaire magnate Li Kaxing made waves by announcing his divestment from mainland China's banking equity. The catalyst for this upheaval appears to be SPDB's drastic wage reduction, igniting a power keg of employee dissatisfaction and culminating in the strike. The disgruntled workforce alleges that their former monthly salaries of 20,000 yuan have been decimated to a mere 6,000 yuan. According to insiders, this significant wage reduction is not an isolated incident, but rather indicative of a systemic issue, with the bank already having imposed two rounds of major remuneration cuts. SPDB's official financial statements highlight a year-on-year -year reduction in remuneration. Employee wages for 2022 amounted to 12.672 billion yuan, representing a decrease of 14.75% from 2021. An insider revealed, in a place like Shanghai, there are as many asset management companies as there are hairs on a bull. Employees in brokerages, funds, banks, insurance and other industries frequently job hop. For a salesperson with an average of three to five years of work experience, an annual salary of 200,000 yuan is considered low. The reduction of salary at Pudong Development Bank for financial planners to just over 6,000 yuan per month or 72,000 yuan per year has made it difficult for bank employees to even afford their own mortgage payments. Reports suggest that SPDB's diminishing remuneration is inextricably linked to a reduction in profits. From 2019 to 2021, SPDB's revenue and profit trajectory was in a state of freefall, with last year witnessing a significant plunge. The bank's latest earnings call paints a grim picture, with operating income for the first quarter a mere 48 billion yuan, making a decrease of 3.85% year-on-year. First quarter profits were only 15.8 billion yuan, a decrease of 1835 from last year. Against this backdrop, insiders at SPDB reveal a collective scramble for escape routes, as everyone from investment managers to rank-and-file staff actively seek alternative employment. In a sign of the times, Many claiming to be bank employees lament the harsh economic climate, with widespread pessimism clouding the financial sector. As per a report by the National Business Daily dated May 6, the East Money Choice Financial Terminal had, as of May 4, collected a comprehensive remuneration analysis for 52 mainland securities firms. These included A-share listed firms, new third board listed security firms and those with published prospectus drafts intending to go public. Citic Securities stood out with the highest average remuneration, topping at 836,400 yuan. The study unearthed that of these 52 brokerages, a staggering 48 have witnessed a slump in their average employee remuneration. Moreover, for 22 of these firms, this decline is more than 20%, while 15 have seen their remuneration dwindle between 10 to 20%. Industrial securities had the most decrease, where average remuneration plummeted by an alarming 45.14%. 
The China International Capital Corporation, CICC, renowned for its hefty salaries, disclosed in its 2021 annual report that a dozen of its directors, supervisors and senior executives enjoyed pre-tax annual salaries exceeding 5 million yuan, with four individuals surpassing the 8 million yuan mark. However, by the time of the 2022 annual report, no executive's remuneration had crossed the 5 million yuan threshold, the highest barely reaching 3.965 million yuan. This clearly attests to the burgeoning trend of wage cuts disrupting the financial sector. Drawing on data from Wikipedia, the Shanghai Pudong Development Bank, SPDB, boasts total assets approximating 836.7 billion. When juxtaposed with American banks, SPDB secures a respectable seventh place, nipping at the heels of Morgan Stanley. Within the Chinese banking landscape, the bank is bested only by the big four state-owned banks, Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, ICBC, China Construction Bank, CCB, Agricultural Bank of China, ABC, and Bank of China, BOC and subsequently by Bank of Communications, China Merchants Bank, Postal Savings Bank, and Industrial Bank. However, these institutions are not immune to challenges or grappling with their respective hardships. The Industrial and Commercial Bank, the Construction Bank, and the Agricultural Bank have all reported profits for the year 2022, with earnings of 348.3 billion yuan, 302.5 billion yuan and 241.1 billion yuan respectively. Despite these seemingly solid figures, the trio has balked at the central government's recommendation to reduce the mortgage interest rate to 4.3%, fearing such a move would whittle down their annual profits by hundreds of billions of yuan. They are also fully aware that if the actual debt was incorporated into the balance sheet, the financial picture would be far less rosy. Chinese national level banks have recently seen an unusual turnover among their governors, resignations or dismissals alike. All these changes have a common thread, non-performing loans. On April the 1st, the current chairman and party secretary of Bank of China found themselves in a predicament and was investigated. In the preceding month, the National Development Bank had replaced its deputy party secretary. Leadership reshuffles also transpired at the China Life Insurance Group. On the evening of May 11th, Yang Guang, the chief expert of Agricultural Bank, was taken into custody. This conundrum can be traced back to the unique banking scenario in China, where bank governors are obliged to meet loan performance targets, which entails ensuing a certain quantum of loans. However, if these loans turn sour, the bank governor is held responsible. The predicament of the current bank governors are twofold. On the one hand, they must dispense loans or risk dismissal for failing to meet targets. On the other hand, Reaching these loan targets might create bad debts, leaving them at risk of termination nonetheless. This has given rise to a self-deprecating sentiment within the industry, with banking stubbing their profession as being high risk. In terms of debt, the major state-owned banks of China found themselves in a precarious position. Li Kaxing, a prominent figure in the business realm, is divesting from the Postal Savings Bank of China, PSBC. On the evening of May 11th, the Hong Kong Stock Exchange announced that Li Kaxing Foundation had shed 22.493 million shares of the PSBC, totaling a market value of Hong Kong dollars 120 million at an average price of Hong Kong dollars $5 per share. Post-divestment, the foundation holds 1.98 billion shares, equating to 9.97% of the PSBC's H shares, falling below the 10% threshold. The Li Kaxing Foundation had also reduced its holdings of PSBC H shares on September 29th of the previous year, selling 50,000 shares at an average price of $4.07 Hong Kong dollars. In light of this, many banks have been reinforcing their capital this year due to shortages stemming from bad debts. 
In February, the China Securities Regulatory Commission approved China Merchants Bank allotment of 1.4 billion shares to its original shareholders. That same month, the bank's 12th board of directors decided to issue no more than RMB 107 billion in capital bonds that was due, leaving only RMB 40 billion on the books. In order to pay off old debts with new ones, the PSBC also issued shares, making a non-public issuance of 6.7 billion new shares. Despite such efforts, the performance of many banks is on a downward trajectory, with high rates of bad debt and falling price-to-book ratios. Of all the bank stocks on the A share market, only Ningbo Bank's stock price is higher than its net assets per share. All bank stock prices have fallen below net assets per share, including the big four state-owned banks. This is an unprecedented situation for bank stocks worldwide. Huashan Bank, a substantial national bank, reported a 2.15% drop in revenue for 2022 on March the 13th. The bank's non-performing loan ratio remains high at 1.8%, with a price-to-book ratio of just 0.26. The market essentially does not recognize the bank's net assets, believing that these are mostly bad debts. As a result, Despite Huashan Bank's net assets per share being nominally valued at 20 yuan, its share price is only 5 yuan. Previously, Mingshan Bank's price-to-book ratio was around 0.5, but now it stands at 0.3. Many banks in mainland China's A share market are burdened with bad debts and insolvency. According to Western rules, these banks should declare bankruptcy, but the Chinese government has refrained from doing so. These banks balance their assets through irregular means, such as confiscating depositors' money, claiming today that your deposit has disappeared, and tomorrow that your wealth management product is gone. In general, banks rely on the interest spread between relatively high loan interest rates and relatively low deposit interest rates for their profits. However, now that depositors are depositing large amounts of funds and even prepaying higher interest mortgages. These two factors undoubtedly represent significant headwinds for banks. With the economic downturn and decreasing liquidity in the property market, the number of loans with high returns and stable interest rates is rapidly decreasing, pushing the bank's interest spread below the profit warning line. As of April 25th, of the 29 listed banks that have disclosed their data, eight have a net interest margin below the warning line of 1.8%. If this state of affairs persists, it may herald bank failures. These banks include Bank of Communications, Mingshan Bank, Chongqing Bank, Qingdao Bank, Bank of Beijing, Bank of China, Shanghai Pudong Development Bank, and Hangzhou Bank, all of which have net interest margins below 1.8%, with the lowest being a mere 1.48%. The banking industry as a whole had a net interest margin of 1.91% at the end of last year, the first time it has fallen below 2% since 2010. If Chinese banks cannot hold on and consequently collapse, the people will be left penniless. Chinese citizens burdened with home and car loans will find themselves unable to repay these debts without even a roof over their heads, potentially resorting to living on the streets. Would this not incite protests? Hence, it can be speculated that future events, such as the recent strike at Shanghai Pudong Development Bank, and the increasing number of employees taking to the streets in protest or lying flat, will become more prevalent.